Hey guys, what's up? Sergio from Kitano Sound, and this is a video about EQ. Now, EQ is something that beginners usually, even if they understand what it does, they don't know how to apply it or where to use the EQ, where to put it, when to put it. And these seven tips, I think they are seven, I have them laid down here. Seven, yeah, seven tips help me a lot when it comes to EQing and I think they're gonna help you a lot too. So let's start with the first tip that is usually what you hear people say is don't boost the signal only cut. Now I'm not gonna tell you that because I don't believe that a hard rule like that is good for producing in general but I'm gonna tell you that generally what works for me when it comes to going about EQing is first boost the whole signal, boost the whole signal, and then cut the frequency that sounds bad. So as you keep boosting the signal, you're gonna start hearing it take place in the mix, and then you're gonna start hearing a certain frequency or groups of frequencies being like too harsh. So then you go to that frequency and you cut. That's the first tip. Very good technique to EQ. Now, second tip is sometimes that happens when you cut in a certain frequency is that the sound is going to lose body on that specific range of frequencies. So for example, if you were to cut somewhere along the high mids, then the whole sound would sound, even though it would sound better because it, it doesn't have that frequency, it might sound bad because now it's lacking high mids that, that was giving it to them. So what you can do is cut narrow, okay? Cut narrow on a certain frequency that sounds bad and then boost wide over the same area, even the same frequency, just boost wide so that there is a cut on a frequency and then the frequencies around it are gonna give the sound body again, right? So boost narrow, uh, so boost wide and cut narrow over the, around the same frequencies. Okay, my next tip is about how to discover that frequency that you wanna cut or boost. So, my advice on going about it is first guess the frequency that you want to modify. Use your mind to just guess it. Be like, is it 1k hertz? Is it 2k? Is it in the lower mids? Is it in the higher mids? Is it the bass? Is it the treble? What is it? Try to guess it. And then go to the sound and scan. Create a peak, a narrow, pretty big peak, and start scanning around that area. If you find that frequency that you thought was bad, cut it. If you don't find it around that area, reset and try to think about it again. Don't be like scanning throughout the whole frequency spectrum because you're gonna find a lot of things that if you boost like this, sound bad. If you boost and you start scanning through everything, a lot of things are gonna sound bad. So try to think about a specific area and boost there or like scan there. And if you don't find it, reset and try again. Guess again and start again. Okay, let's give, let's make a demonstration on this uh, track. So I'm guessing that are on the mids, there's a frequency that is a little bit too high, okay? So I'm gonna start scanning through there and I'm gonna see if I find it. Okay.
Okay. So, I thought about a frequency that I thought was sounding too harsh. I scanned through that area alone, and then I cut that frequency. And now what I could do, if I thought that... Oh, damn, now it sounds like it's like in mids. I could think that maybe, then I would... Okay, this is too... too... Oh. There you go. I could do that. So I, I bring the mids back up by giving it a general boost, but I cut that frequency, that specific frequency. So that is a way that you can know where and when to EQ. Okay, next tip. And for this next tip, we're gonna go to a different project. Now, I'm gonna warn you, I, the past week, I lost my hard drive broke and I lost all of my sample libraries. I'm recovering them from the HDD, but I lost a bunch of stuff. So this project does not have any drums and any samples really, because I, I just lost all the samples, but it doesn't matter. What I'm, what I'm gonna show you still holds true. So this one is about how when you have multiple instruments, am I recording? Yes, because I recorded this video twice before. <laughs> when you have multiple instruments, the way you mix them together, because multiple instruments are gonna try, sometimes they're gonna try to be on the same frequency spot, and therefore they're gonna sound muddy with, with each other. Or not muddy, but they're gonna be hard to differentiate. So maybe there's a vocal and a guitar or something like that. And they're gonna be um, not well mixed to the point that you can hear the vocal and the guitar separated. So what you do is you play Tetris with them. On one of them, you find the frequency, the frequency that you think it should be accentuated on and you boost it. And on the other instrument, you cut that same frequency. Okay? So that's what I call playing Tetris. I think a lot of people call it playing Tetris. So in this case, I have this, which is like the main guitar thingy. And, and sadly, I cannot... Um, Sadly, I cannot show you what is being mixed against because it's just this and the sub. I, the samples are lost. But even when it comes to the sub, we can see what I've done here. So here, in this second EQ that you see here, um, we have kind of a cut on the sub bass, which, you know, I do a pretty <laughs> big cut here. Then we have a boost around 1K, and then we have a cut again over 10K. So the reason why I did this is because in this song, this particular instrument was mostly accentuated or holding its place around that area, around the lower mids-ish but I cut on the lower part for other elements and I cut on the 10K plus for symbols, effects, um, white noises, all of that stuff. So here I was playing a little bit of Tetris on top of a different techniques as well. And this brings me to the next tip, which is gonna be very related to this one, which is Cut the sub on most elements. That is, in most cases, you're gonna have a separated sub or either a sub or just a bass that has the sub bass. And on all of the rest of the elements that are sounding at the same time, you need to cut the sub bass. So there shouldn't be multiple sub basses at the same time sounding. This is a general rule. It's not always 
the best option, <laughs> but most of the time it is. So you should tend towards doing that on all of your tracks. Okay. My next tip is the more digital the sound is, the more flexible and the more harsh and the more things you can do with EQ, while the more analog it is, the more gentle you should be with the EQ. Because you don't wanna you don't want a guitar to sound like a bass. The guitar is a guitar. So make changes with EQ, but don't be over the top with them, right? Okay, there's that. And also, this comes with another tip included, a bonus, which is if you could picture a range of, um, a range of tasks when you are producing, you can go from sound design at the lower level towards mastering at the higher level, okay? Now, when you are, I don't mean higher level, I think more difficult, just closer to the final result. When it comes to sound design, the, you can go as crazy as you want with the EQ because you are designing a sound the way you want it to be. So you can do crazy cuts, crazy boosts, just whatever you want. But as you get closer to the mixing stage, those EQs should be way more gentle. And then as you continue towards the mastering stage, then the EQ should be very, very, very gentle. So the closer you're getting to the final result, the more subtle the EQ should be. That's the tip. And my next tip and the last one, which is the most important, I think, is do not EQ if it's not necessary. Listen to the sound. Think to yourself, is it bad? Should I EQ it? If it's a yes, then go for it. But if you don't really find a reason to do it, don't even do it. Don't even do it. Skip it. When I started producing, I was putting EQs and making boosts and cuts on every single track until I realized I'm just making them sound worse because I think I have to do it, I'm making them sound worse. Just EQ with purpose. Think what you want and then do it. Don't be like, I have to do this, okay? So those were all my tips. I hope that you liked them a lot. If you did, please like, subscribe, notification bell, all of that good stuff. And yeah, peace.